Rising people, it is Instructor Higgs from Dallas Life coming back to you with yet another video. All right, we're going to go over a total of seven different categories as it pertains to the concealed carry bag or the tactical fanny. I like to call it the tactical fanny, so that way it could just sound even more better to rock a fanny pack as a man, and that is what it is. So, first and foremost, we're going to go over comfortability. So the comfortability of this bag is pretty much 10 out of 10 and it's most definitely comfortable. Um, you can wear it as I'm wearing it now or you can go ahead and strap it along the waist. And if you strap it along the waist, you'll just have it pretty much here. Um, I did not draw from that position as you will see in the shooting portion of the video. However, I drew from the position that it is in now, okay? So to speak to the comfortability, it simply goes right across. You have little adjustments via this tab, okay, both here and here, and you'll be able to adjust, the, adjust this according to what you like, okay? And then you throw it over, and then you, I sling it across the front, and it gives it, in my opinion, be able to protect it more. Of course, if it was down here, you'd be able to protect it the exact same way. However, once again, in the shooting portion, I did not show the going across the waist, so I only showed in this position that it is in now. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and go over the different features and different things. You have here, where the bag is have compartments. This is where the bag is actually stored, where the firearm is actually stored. These two pockets can fit maybe like change, maybe dollars and things such as that. Um, the palm. Okay. Here we have a couple of straps up under here they, uh, to each his own. You can feed maybe a tourniquet through it, but then at the same time, if you want this to be a concealment bag, that would be something that I would not recommend, okay? Because this bag, it doesn't have a lot of molly on it. It doesn't have, you know, it looks like a, just a regular, almost a regular fanny pack. From what I can see, I can pretty much tell that this is or could possibly have a firearm in it. You have these two compartments here in the rear where I store the magazine. However, you do have compartments in the internal wear magazine. Now in the video, the shooting portion of the video, you will see that I did reload from the inside. So let's go ahead and show you that really quick. Uh, before we show you the inside where the magazines are, let's show you the tab. This here is going to be the tab, the quick release tab, where it has the Velcro on Velcro and pretty much the pistol is stored inside as such. Right here, you have more slots where other magazines can fit. A total of two magazines. I've seen that if I put a magazine here, that it does, it gets a bit crowded and it get, becomes hard to zip. So keep that in mind also. So you can, I just simply put this here for uh, demonstration purposes. And it's also here on the opposite side, okay? You also can start doing some funky things with the straps and stuff, feeding it through or whatnot to make it even a more slim profile. Place this bag itself maybe tied to a seat so that way you can just have it access to it and it doesn't have to necessarily be on your person but uh, on a vehicle once again these things we're going to talk about it i do not recommend however i'm still showing other carry options for maybe a backup pistol and other things and comfortability so once again that is there the pistol is stored here i'm carrying inside a glock 45 chamber to nine months about time according to statistics. So that's time according to statistics. That's the second category. So I was getting a 244, maybe a 256. Um, I got a 333 three, three, as far as it pertains to time. So uh, a 246, draw the first shot, I believe it was. I got to go back and Yo, uh, statistically, Gunfights happen. They're quick, violent, over with uh, QBO. Nice. Love them, guys. But anyways, three yards, three seconds with two and a half shots statistically. So 2.5 shots. You already know numbers when they get the averages and all this other stuff. That's how they get their numbers. However, if you're looking at three yards, three seconds with two and a half shots, three seconds. And realistically, we want a sub-second draw. That would be the best. We're working on a sub-second draw. But the average shooter can place, you know, two shots on, on target within the, at seven yards so within an average of one and a half seconds. So with that being said, one and a half seconds is already half the time of a gunfight statistically. Keep in mind, statistically, I'm not saying all gunfights are the same because they are all are different and unique in their own ways. However, 
1.5 seconds is already half of the three seconds. So drawing from this, I was getting well over two and a half seconds. So in order to really put this to use, you will have to really have situational awareness to make up for that time and buy that time because time buys you. Said, if you're talking 2.4, that is a lot of time to draw from this. I'm talking about the quick release, snatching down, grabbing, and getting a, a positive, confirmed uh, firing grip on the pistol, mirroring the hands together, and first shot. So I did not, so disclaimer, I did not train off of this as much as I necessarily need to compare it to how I do when I appendix carry. So appendix carry and then outside the waistband, of course, I'm going to be faster. But so I think those numbers will reduce if I was to train off of the bag more. So just be keep that in mind as I'm talking about the bag. So if someone really chooses this bag, they would just have to really train and I'm sure you can get those numbers down compared to me just taking it out there and actually trying it, okay? So with that being said, let's talk about the size and the options. So the size of the pistol, once again, I told you this is a Glock 45 in here and uh, 45 as in 45B model, chambered at nine millimeter, okay? You have it in here without any attachments. This bag was designed so that way with iron sights in mind, and it wasn't designed as you can see with an optic because the clear space is literally very minimal. So it's not uh, designed for any type of optic. However, what I did notice is that just this little space here will allow us to really quick yeah just so for those it's clear okay allow us to put a TLR1 on there this is a full size weapon mounted light okay and get that in there and pretty much you could get it closed up and I was able to get it zipped up so just keeping that in mind okay so as far as reholstering we're not reholstering fast anyways but you pretty much can get the TLR1 that's a full size weapon mounted light um, pretty much in there and you can pretty much get this thing nice and zipped up actually. Okay, just to show you as such. Okay, so with the Glock 45 chamber to nine millimeter being a semi full size firearm, in my opinion, it's still kind of full size. It's got the 17 frame, which is full size compared to the, uh, and then the 19 size. So pretty much full size. And then you can see, obviously it got a little bit more room. So I'm pretty sure confidently and uh, I can double check, the Glock 17 will easily fit in here with no problem, okay? So you're talking size, you can get a light on there, maybe the TLR7, you can get a Surefire X300. Uh, obviously, I just got the uh, TLR, Streamlight TLR1 HL uh, in here. So, and it zips up and you can do, get to work on the same thing, okay? Really quick to mention the tabs, it is ambidextrous, all right, just in case I forgot. So although I'm wearing it this way, you can wear it the opposite way, put the firearm the opposite direction, and then you just swap tabs that way. The, the, it is left hand user friendly, okay? So that's pretty nice. I'm gonna have a link down below, hopefully YouTube, because we're trying to grow our page. We're really trying to grow our channel. So hopefully um, YouTube does not punish us for it. It's gonna allow us to continue growing. However, we talk about price, you're looking at uh, my wife purchased this for me for $35. She found it on sale and it was just about to change the price. So it's anywhere from $30, $35 on sale and then up to $45 on Amazon. Um, I searched for 511 Tactical, their direct website, and on the direct website, it does not have this phone on their website. It's almost like it's discontinued, but it's not because everyone still have it in stores in different places, but you will not find it on. 511 Tactical, the direct website. Just because once again, I see my partner, um, uh, Will Teamer, um, of Detroit Police Department. Uh, when we go to the gym, he has this bag. And when he has this bag, I was like, dang, I gotta get one. Cause I had a, a different fanny pack, right? And need longevity. So let's dive into that. Durability and longevity of the bag. If you talk about durability and longevity, it's obviously 511. They already have a track record of having Phenomenal, long lasting products, gear, all things. So 511 is actually proven, proven and tried. I personally do not have enough time behind this specific one in order to tell you that, 
So therefore, I would do a year review after a year. Let's talk about it. The talk is concealment, as you can see. I'm wearing a light colored outfit or, or my boob shirt, pretty much. So that way, uh, you can see it on my person. However, uh, I'm gonna model this because I got a couple pictures. I'm gonna send those pictures in right now. Yeah. So if you see it in the pictures with my amazing modeling, right? Rocking this on maybe a black shirt, okay? Black shirt, I got it on a white background, maybe a blue shirt. Uh, you rock it black on black. You can't really necessarily see it. And if you're kind of like jogging, running, biking, cycling, all these different things, running straight to the store, that's my purpose of carrying this. If I do carry it, because usually I carry it just straight on my person. I will be running to the store with that. So concealment wise, it does conceal well, right? It's not that I necessarily look like I have a pistol on me, but if you go from gun guy to gun guy or a person that's really looking, you kind of can tell it. So concealment wise is eh, kind of in the middle, okay? Um, in my opinion, it conceals decent, okay? Especially on a black on black shirt. You rocking a black shirt, it, it almost disappears on a black shirt, okay? Uh, I have, was rocking a black hoodie in one of the um, pictures and it pretty much conceals very well. Category. Would I or do I recommend off-body care? Absolutely not. First and foremost, this is not a holster directly. Um, if you find a, a maybe a revolver inside of here with a double action of 10 to 12 pounds, then okay, that revolver going in here. However, keep in mind that this is not a holster. Although it's protecting the trigger guard, it's not completely protecting the trigger guard if you see what I'm saying. Even me, when I was doing the, the, the drills and stuff, I was kind of nervous when I was doing it because I have the Timney trigger in here. And that Timney trigger is, is dropping at two pounds, right? Two and a half pounds. So I was even nervous doing it. Just the quick action and stuff like that. I was, uh, I was actually nervous doing it. Uh, would I recommend off-body carry? No. It's an awkward position. And we need to... If you're not cheating in the gunfight, you're not trying to win. You need to have all the advantages in the world and, and be able to run it. Uh, this does not allow me to carry with a firearm with an optic on it. That for me is a no-go. Um, the purpose of me even getting it in the first place, and I asked my uh, wife to replace the all original tactical fanny pack that I had into this one was simply because if you go into the quick gas station, this is better than nothing. Okay. Also, this is good for backup guns. So if I was to have this, you know, when we say truck guns or whatever, what purpose behind where we're going or our knowledge of where we're going and whatnot, not necessarily leaving this negligently in our side of the vehicle for anyone to break in, access it, and then use it against others. However, if I'm going somewhere with this being a backup, I can tie this quickly to a seat, strap it, boom, ready to go. If I go to the gym, absolutely love it. Phenomenal for the gym. Absolutely love the gym. When my fellas I'm trying to work out, we go running, we go jogging around the um, block. We do not want to simply have to, you know, necessarily have on a belt, anything with belt pants. We have on gym wear and gym attire. So therefore, we are able to conceal our firearms as we jogging, and um, it's minimal. Very comfortable. I recommend this bag for women, the ladies. Uh, at the same time, I do recommend just having a uh, firearm on your person. Um, I recommend this for gym usage. I recommend this for uh, maybe you attach this to your bag because I'm going to review my um, my other bag, my Vertex bag that's coming. That review is coming soon. This attached to that is even better. It's, it's, it gives, it allows you to have one additional attachment to other gear, so gear on top of the gear. That's pretty much it. I think it sums it up. You guys seven categories. Um, please like, subscribe. We are really trying to grow this channel, so you know, our subscribers are going up. Please do us a huge, huge, huge favor and join the movement of getting this information out. Please, I, uh, we're, we're begging of you, okay? I really appreciate you. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment. Please, we are responding to comments. We're trying to be active. We are trying to film as much as possible, and we're going to get a video uh, out at least once a week, starting off. 
All right, until next time, this is Dallas Life. You got me, Instructor Hicks. You still can be a conditioned yellow, but your primary focus is, is, is driving, right? Exactly. It, it's, it's a little bit different versus walking around the neighborhood versus driving, you know what I mean? Exactly. So walking around at night going to the gas station, yeah, you can kind of forecast it a little bit with a different type of situation awareness. But as you're driving, it's a little bit different because your primary focus is going to be the road and cars that are in front of you, right? And looking for pedestrians on bikes. And all of that stuff, right? For real, for So real. when you're talking about driving and being in condition yellow your, your your focus isn't necessarily for threats per se i mean it is but it's not your primary focus is making sure right. you don't hit somebody else and don't nobody else hit you so this is my now i got a counter now that i thought about it okay now you're sitting waiting on the wife to get out the store different story Different story. That's a different that, scenario. That, that's, that's the one that I thought of. Not that you just further. That's, that's a different scenario, right? And in that case, then yeah, the situational awareness about everything else around the environment is different. Right. When you talk about situational awareness, you're looking at place awareness, people awareness, and thing awareness. Right? What are the people doing in your environment? What are the things doing in your environment? What exactly. purpose can they serve? And really, what's the physical environment like? Now, if you in a motor vehicle driving in motion, right? Exactly. It's a, it take the thing awareness takes more precedent than the people awareness. Precisely. Right? Precisely. So you can't necessarily focus on people. It, it becomes the priority. When you sit Precisely. in a stop sign, then your people awareness can take priority for a moment. Or if you or if you wait in the parking lot, people awareness takes priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the priority levels of the different parts of the ecology take precedent depending on precedent depending on the situation. Exactly. Would you ever carry a tactical planning car? No. No. I just carry my person. Yeah, I used to carry my person for the most part, for real, for real. That's why I'm looking at the Enigma, though, so tough, because, like, you, if I'm at the crib and I'm just wearing some gym shorts or something, or some yeah. jogger pants, roll it, roll in that, throw that yeah. on real quick, and bust a And move. that's what I mean. Because I be, now I'm rocking, I do the full-blown next belt, mm -hmm. Regular shorts, and I literally put on my regular holster. And I literally, and I've been drawing from that, and it's been working. Usually, I thought that the holster would drag up and stuff, but mm -hmm. no. Not what I wear the actual belt, shorts over it, and I literally carry a full size suit. Yeah. And it works. That's what you see a lot of women do. They'll put the, um, they'll put like a blue alpha gear or a neck belt or something like that up here, right? Mm. And have a holster right here uh, for a compact gun, and it's exactly. right here. Exactly. And they've been rocking the next belt doing it? Sometimes it's the next belt, sometimes, sometimes it's whatever kind of old belt they don't... But just a belt in general. Yeah, yep. That's pretty mm -hmm. badass. Mm -hmm. I got respect for that. Mad respect. <laughs>